I think the the interesting situation is is Middlestat, maybe to an, a lesser extent Henry Okiharu. I know his name's not exactly out there, but those are the two guys pending RFAs where I can see both of them kind of having the same mentality like you've committed to a lot of these other guys. I would like to see the same kind of commitment here or maybe send me somewhere else where I can get it. Middlestat's been really good. He's also said publicly he wants to be here. Um, I know they're not. It was kind of ruled out that they were shopping him, but they've been taking calls on him. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Yoki Haru, I think, is a little bit lesser extent. I think he's he's playing a lot better as of late. Um, but he was clearly in and out of the lineup, maybe a little bit out of favor early on. But he seems to be back now. Uh, defensive injuries and things like that have kind of played a part of that. But he's playing a lot better. Um, so if there's a surprise move to be out there, I feel like it'll be one of those two. I don't envision the Sabres trading a high pick this year to go out and get a player, but maybe, you know, the Greenway deal where you give up a second or a third or something like that to go and get somebody. Or if you're looking at a top prospect to maybe get moved, maybe you're looking at a Matt Savoy or an Isaac Rosen. I, those are your kind of your trade chips there. Again, I just don't exactly know what's out there. If you're trading middle stat, you need to acquire a forward coming in because let's face it, there's no Jack Quinn coming back in the, in the fu- uh, near future to kind of fill that role. So... I don't know. They're a wild card. I don't envision them being all that busy, but I do think there's a handful of moves that they can be made there. Like I said, to me this year, I know it stinks because that's what the trade deadline has become about. It's become about the pending UFAs, but that's not the interesting story with the Sabres this year, in my opinion. But it's probably all we're going to end up talking about because I, I don't know. I don't envision that that move happening now if it's going to happen at all. Yeah, you don't envision a more of a hockey trade, a long-term hockey trade happening. And if you do, it would be either in that draft time or in the summer where the cap situation kind of opens up for other teams to be able to have the flexibility to take and move contracts. Exactly. Like you said, there could be, you know, I mean, was it a couple of years ago we saw, you know, Vrana and Mantha get swapped at the deadline, you know, in the last hour there. So like these trades do happen um, in terms of players that are out there. I don't really know what the equivalent of Casey Middlestat would be, but Adams has made it clear. He's not interested in futures. If that's the type of trade that he's going to make, he's interested in a talent for talent swap. And I just, I don't know. Is it a, young defenseman on a team is it another forward just a different name I, I don't really know i know you know depending on what you read and who you hear out there there's some some younger guys on some people's big boards but i don't know if any of them are exactly what the sabers are looking for i know jeff merrick's talked a lot about you know scott lawton and him being someone that the sabers are interested in but i i don't know if that's the type of move i necessarily want the sabers to make because i still think they need not that lawton's not a good player he is a good player he's just he's a different player but Peyton Krebs the way that he's been playing lately maybe you can elevate him and you need more of that physical jam I don't know like I said I I don't envision it happening now to me it's more of a summer or like you said draft or free agency style of trade yeah and at at Jeff Skinner situation we know that he left practice uh, yesterday so again that's kind of concerning there what the situation might be with him but you're right I think if you make a move you're going to need to bring some forwards back in because a if you're trading Kway Casey Middlestat and if Jeff Skinner is going to be away on a, on a somewhat significant uh, uh, absence here with Jack Quinn already out like those are three big holes that you would have to fill in the forward lines and I'm sorry but Tyson Jost and Eric Robinson aren't going to be able to fill those top end roles in your top six on your wing spots so uh, I'm with you if they if they do do a move make a move where middle stat is moved um, you know I, I'd want to see an NHL talented forward come back in the deal not just two top prospects that aren't even going to get in the lineup I know there are some guys in Rochester that could be given the opportunity uh, that are capable of possibly stepping into an NHL role but Again, are they ready for that type of role in a top six if you were to move a Casey Middlestad who's, you know, worked up and down and been like the ultimate utility guy for them this year? And if Jeff Skinner uh, does miss any sort of time or any other forward that does get injured, like the Sabres really don't have the top six depth up there right now to be able to, you know, overcome a significant uh, injury like that. So uh, I'm with you if they if they I want to make sure that they get somebody else back in that deal. Yeah, no. And I think like, again, I, I don't think there's much to worry about there. If if a guy like a Middlestad is traded based off everything Adam has said and you know it's kind of hard to not believe him when he talks because for the most part he does kind of stick to his guns there and he said i'm not looking for future pieces right now i'm not looking for draft picks or top prospects anymore so again depending on ufas is different you're not going to get a, an nhl caliber piece for an eric johnson mm-hmm. a victor olson as mgs gerritsen you take what you could get to open up the roster spot there but for the guys who have some value he's not looking for those futures according to him so i, I don't think we have to worry about that like you said, though, if middle stat is moved out, depending on what they get, if you're trading middle stat for that defenseman, I hope he either is ready to elevate somebody or he's got another move ready to go to replace him because, like you said, the depth in the top six is kind of an issue right now. 
but also Middlestad has been playing really well and producing. And don't get me wrong, some Dylan Cousins is very capable of being that number two center. Peyton Krebs is now kind of showing he can be that top nine center, which is a whole different argument, different story that I'll get into later. But you got to have those security plans in place. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. I don't envision it happening now. That's kind of been my feeling from the get-go. To me, that is more of a draft trade. You maybe lay the groundwork, have some conversations at the deadline. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we got, what, a week and a half here? Maybe he's working the phones. Maybe some momentum gets made and the right deal shows up and we have a trade to talk about here. The thing about the Sabres is they work quietly. And when moves happen, we kind of don't really hear any inkling of it. So I also, I guess, I wouldn't be shocked if we wake up one day and Adams makes a big move. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, we didn't really see the Greenway trade coming last year. Um, we knew he w- wanted to be active, but that really wasn't something that the Sabres fans were, you know, expecting to, to kind of come. So um, it, Adams, like you said, kind of works quietly and doesn't really uh, give a whole lot out there. And, and there is, really isn't a whole lot to, to speculate there. He always talks about, um, you know, they're always at being active. So that that's basically like the answer he loves to give with that. But you, you're right about Middlestad. I mean, he's leading the team in points right now. So... If you get a guy and you want to try to show your fans that you're trying to at least play meaningful games down the stretch here, you know, trading away your leading point getter right now, that kind of would signal, okay, well, what are we doing here? And obviously they'd, they'd want to look to the future and know that they really can't sign Middlestat to a long-term extension with all of the other players that they've locked up recently to long-term deals around uh, around his age group there. So, you know, if, if you do trade a guy like Middlestat and you want to show the fans that you're still serious about uh, competing, even though 11 points is a lot at this point, um, like you said, you're, they're going to need to show that um, bring in somebody that uh, can maybe not replace middle stats production, but at least give you something in that top six. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, based off everything you said, there's no reason to believe that middle stats going anywhere unless it's for like a talent for talent NHL caliber player. So I don't think there's much to worry about on that end. Um, I'm still not fully convinced that they trade him again. Maybe that's just but it's very funny that their whole mantra has kind of been we want players that want to be here. Middlestat is actively saying he wants to be here. So this would be the first instance of Adams kind of stepping away from the mantra that he's kind of developed here, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either. Um, But again, it's just that track record of Kevin Adams. We haven't seen it yet until he does something to break himself out of that track record. I'm always just going to assume he sticks to that. 